OBS Studio is the king of live streaming software, and rightfully so. It's free and open source, it's the most popular application used by streamers today, and it's got a passionate community of developers constantly looking to improve it. It also has some great advanced features and functionality for streamers to help them either improve the production quality of their stream or make managing a live stream and creating content much easier. But some of these features are hard to find. In this video, I'm gonna be going through my five favorite features, telling you exactly why you should be using them and showing you how to set them up in OBS Studio. Let's go. This video is sponsored by Nerd or Die, the best place to get all of your stream graphics like overlays, alerts, panels, and transitions with a huge selection of designs and plenty of customization options to really make your stream design unique to you. Also in this video, we're doing something unique and giving the first 100 people that use the link below with coupon code GC50OFF a massive 50% off any item in the Nerd or Die store. If you miss out and aren't in the first 100 people, don't worry, they still have a summer sale going on right now where they are giving everyone 20% off all of their products. So click the link below, use the coupon code GC50OFF and enjoy your new stream packages from Nerd or Die. Okay, so first up, we're gonna be talking about scene nesting or nested scenes. And they're exactly as they sound. Effectively, you can add a scene that you've previously created as a source within a scene. So if you have certain elements that you want to use in multiple different scenes, like for example, your camera, your camera frame, and maybe some overlay info like your latest subscriber, you can make a dedicated scene for them and then just add that new scene to all the other scenes that you want that information to appear in. The reason this is so useful is that they are all then managed from one spot rather than having to go through all of your different scenes if you want to make a single change. Now, of course, you can just use groups of sources to achieve this as well, but as soon as you want to then make a single change to anything within that group, you'd have to go through all of the different scenes where that group exists and make that same change. Whereas with scene nesting, you make the change once and it will show in every single scene that has that nested scene within. I in particular find this super useful because I'm so often testing new cameras for this channel that uh, I don't want to go and add a new camera every time to every single scene that I want to use it in. I can instead just have a camera scene that I nest within all the other scenes and when I want to change out a camera, I just do it in one place and then it replicates through all of the different scenes that the camera is used in. The other reason that scene nesting is better than source grouping is that source grouping does not allow you to turn on and off an entire group of sources with one hotkey. Whereas if these sources are all nested within a scene, you can then easily enable and disable that nested scene. So if you do want to go ahead and start using scene nesting, I do have a couple of recommendations for you. Firstly, I would add a NS to the start of any nested scene name so that you don't accidentally swap to it and it keeps it easier to see at a glance. To get started, I would recommend having nested scenes for your alerts, for your camera and the webcam border, and for your overlays. Those are the most common things that I see people reusing from scene to scene, so it makes most sense to nest them first. Even if you're thinking right now, oh, I don't have a complicated enough stream layout to use nested scenes, I promise you it will make more sense in the future as you start to add more and more complexity to your OBS scenes and your OBS sources. It's just gonna make your life a lot easier if you start using nested scenes earlier rather than later. Feature number two is custom browser docs where you can effectively add any kind of web page and dock it within your OBS Studio window. I hear about people still using Streamlabs OBS just purely for the reason that they can have their recent events inside of their streaming application. Well, you can do that in OBS Studio too and you have been able to for quite some time. The most common examples of things that people dock within OBS Studio are their Streamlabs recent events or their stream elements activity feed so they can make sure that they don't miss any subscriber or donation events. I've also seen people do pop-out previews of their stream on Twitch to make sure that nothing is going wrong actually in the sending of data to Twitch. I've even seen people embed channels from their Discord chat so if members of their Discord are chatting about the stream, you could also read that alongside your Twitch chat too. So all you're gonna need to dock any kind of web page within OBS Studio is you need to get the URL of whatever it is that you want to dock. And a lot of these websites have little pop-out buttons where they'll give you a pop-out window of just that feature itself. So all you have to do is pop that out 
take the URL from the new window and add it to your custom browser docs in OBS Studio. It's also worth mentioning that a lot of people used to use this feature to embed their Twitch chat for improved emote support through Better TTV or Francoface. But now those emotes are directly built into the Twitch chat window in OBS Studio. So all you have to do is make sure that you have the window showing and enable the extensions through the setting here. Feature number three is the replay buffer in OBS Studio, which will continuously record the last 10 seconds of your stream and keep it in your computer's memory. Then when you hit the replay buffer hotkey, it will take those last 10 seconds and save it as a file on your computer. In fact, you're not even limited to just 10 seconds. You can set the duration to whatever you like. Just bear in mind that it's using your computer's RAM memory, so you don't want to eat into it too much, especially when you're trying to stream and game simultaneously. It'll show an estimate as to how much RAM it will be using as you customize it. Now, the main reason you'd want to use the replay buffer is because it allows you to quickly and easily create full quality clips from your stream without the need to manually create a Twitch clip. You can then, of course, use these video files to share highlights from your stream on social media or make a compilation of your highlights for a YouTube video or guide. Now, if you do want to use the replay buffer, I'd recommend heading into the settings and checking this option to automatically start the replay buffer when streaming. That way you only have to click one button when you start streaming and it'll automatically start the buffer. And then whenever you want to save the last 10 seconds or 20 seconds or minute, you just press the hotkey that you've set up for the replay buffer save. Feature number four is using separate audio tracks when recording in OBS Studio. Now, this is something that I've hammered on about for a long time, that you can use separate audio tracks for all of your different audio sources in your OBS Studio recordings. So your microphone can go to one track, your game sound to another, and your teammates in Discord to another. That way, when it comes to editing your footage for YouTube or for social media sharing, you retain full control over the volume levels or whether you even want to hear an audio source at all. Too many great clips and recordings are ruined by things like copyrighted music, screaming teammates, or badly mixed audio levels, which all could have been fixed if they used separate audio tracks in their OBS recordings. To set this up, go to your OBS recording settings, make sure you are using a format that supports multiple audio tracks like MKV, then enable how many separate tracks you would like to record. Next, head down to your audio mixer, click the cog next to any audio source, and go to your advanced audio properties. Here you want to select which track each device will record to. So for me, I'll have my microphone go to track one and my desktop audio to go to track two. And don't worry about your audio for your stream. For streaming, OBS Studio automatically mixes all of these audio tracks together and sends that to your stream. This is purely just separating the audio for your recordings. Streams are completely unaffected. Now, if you use the MKV format, like I suggested, most editing software actually won't recognize this and will require you to remix MKV files to something like MP4 before being able to edit, which you can do within OBS Studio by going to File, Remix Recordings, and then adding all of your different MKV files there. You can also automatically set up remixing as soon as you finish recording in OBS by enabling this option here. Then when you start editing your OBS recordings in whatever editing software you're using, you should see multiple different audio tracks, each of which can be muted, made quieter or louder, or edited in any way completely independently of all your other audio sources. The final advanced feature that we're going to be talking about today, feature number five, is called Transition Override, which effectively allows you to use different transitions for different scenes. So many people make use of Stinger transitions in their streams. If you haven't yet used a Stinger transition or made one yet, I actually have a full video breaking down exactly how you can make your own Stinger transition, which has been wildly popular. I'll leave that linked up in the top card in one of these corners. Uh, so if you do want to make a Stinger transition, you can do. But what we're talking about today is transition overrides, which effectively allows you to customize different transitions for different scenes. Because as great as Stinger transitions are, maybe sometimes you want something a little different when you switch to a specific scene. Maybe you even want to use a completely different Stinger transition when you watch a replay or something like that. Well, this can be achieved by using a transition override. All you have to do is firstly, you want to make sure that you have added the transition that you want to use in the scene transitions window. So for me, I have my main stinger that I use by default, and I've also added this secondary stinger that I want to just use when I transition to a specific scene. Next, choose which scene this applies to, right click, choose transition override, and select which transition you would like to use instead. And that's it. Now, by default, all your scenes will use the default transition set over here in Scene Transitions, and any scenes that you've set to use an override will use the overridden transition instead. Easy. 
So there you have it. Those are my five favorite advanced features in OBS Studio. And of course, you can do much more advanced things if you start to install plugins. So maybe if there's enough interest, I'll also cover my five favorite plugins that you can add to OBS Studio if you really want to get super creative with your live stream or your content creation. If you want to discuss these anymore, or if you think that I've missed any of your favorite features in OBS Studio, I'd highly recommend joining the Gaming Careers Discord server, where we have thousands of members who are all involved in streaming and content creation who love discussing things like this as well. There'll be a link to that down in the description below. Finally, if you have not subscribed to the Gaming Careers YouTube channel, I would highly recommend doing so. This whole channel is built around the ethos of learning to live stream. So we have dozens of other videos about live streaming and how to do cool things in OBS Studio, uh, as well as much, much more. So check out the rest of the content, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace. Slides to play tennis. Bounce. Where we? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. He's going to say, "Pagan." I want to find out. <laughs>